Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. All right, welcome back to the program. Welcome to Advanced Class number 187. And we'll get started again with a little review of yesterday's content, yesterday's material. And we add one thing, the way things stand, this structure that we didn't, we didn't really get to. We didn't get to see this yesterday. Tal y como están las cosas, the state of being, the way things are now, the way things stand. But actually, before I mention this, before we get into it, I'd like to talk about one phrasal verb which is to break down, to break down. And, and the, the student um, guide emphasizes the use desglosser, to break down, to break something down. So we can break down figures, we can break down statistics, we can break down information. Let's break down the sales. Now ask me if I would like to break them down by region, or if I would like to break them down by method of payment. Kyle, would you like to break them down by region or by method of payment? I'd like to break them down by region. So notice how to break, I'd like to break them down. Break the figures down. Break the sales down. So this is a separable phrasal verb. Break down. Okay, so we can break down statistics. We can break a process down into steps, for example. We can break points down into a conclu or a, a conclusion down into several points or steps in a process, for example. So break down to simplify, to to reduce something to its elements, desglosser. Okay, then we also have averia, which is also to break down my car well uh, well th there it's a noun my car broke down as it well, as a as a verb or i suffered a breakdown as a noun so i had a breakdown my car broke down last week so this is basically a mechanical failure the system failed the motor failed it stopped running it broke down i don't know why but it broke down my car is old and it breaks down often. So we saw this structure. We, well, we saw this uh, phrasal verb yesterday. So we can move on and look at this structure. The way things stand. Tal y como están las cosas, yo que tú no iría allí. The way things stand. If I were you, I wouldn't go there. The way things stand, if I were you, yo que tu, if I were you, I wouldn't go there. So the way things stand, essentially meaning, given the current situation, given the reality, given the way things are, I wouldn't, in this case, if I were you, I wouldn't go there. Tal y como están las cosas, creo que es la mejor opción. The way things stand, I think it's the best option. The way things stand. The way things stand in the world today, I think it's a very good idea to work on your English. The way things stand, I think it's a great idea to study and to practice your English because it will open a lot of doors for you. It will create a lot of opportunities for you. The way things stand. The way things are. That's the reality. That's the way things stand right now. We can have... So, someone can have a stand on something or a stance as well, which is essentially their position. What is his stance on taxes, we could say? What's his position on taxes? How does he stand on taxes we, when, when we ask these questions, we're asking, what is that person, a politician, for example, how do they stand on taxes? What is their position? What do they believe? So to stand on something 
means to, to, to have a position, to have an opinion, to have a, you know, like a, un punto de vista, a point of view. So a politician's stance, it's like their platform. What is their platform on these certain issues? How do they stand on taxes? How do they stand on immigration and all these issues? And then, so now, it, it, if you understand that, it relates to this structure, the way things stand now, the position that we're in, the reality, the way things stand. Well, yes, the way things stand, I think it's important to learn English. The way things stand, it's good to get an education in the world today. The way things stand now, it's very important to be educated. It's very important to work hard. The way things stand, things aren't as easy as they once were. The world is more competitive. The way things stand, it looks like things are going to get even more competitive. So it's important to work hard. Right? So there we have the structure, the way things stand. All right, let's move on now and take a look at our expression of the day. Expression of the day. Okay, our expression of the day. Our expression of the day today is to go bust. B-U-S-T. Hopefully that doesn't happen to, to you or to us. To go bust is essentially to go bankrupt, to run out of money. They went bust. Mm -hmm. in, this, in this crisis, this, this global recession that we're, we're in, I suppose, hopefully coming out of, um, a lot of companies have gone bust. A lot of companies have gone bankrupt. They've run out of money to go bust, to fail. But this is a business structure. This is an expression used in business when we're talking about money. We're talking about businesses failing, going bankrupt, to go bust. They went bust last year. All right? To go bust is our expression of the day. Now, we will move on and take a look at uh, 187. So the second part now of class 187, where we see negative questions. So again, one of my favorite structures here, but now practicing not, not just the mastering the interrogative that I love, but negative questions. So I'll give you some information. I want you to ask me why with negative questions. So... She's not with us. And you can say, Kyle, why isn't she with us? Why isn't she with us? We don't go there anymore. Now the question, why don't you go there anymore? Why not? I don't know. Why don't you go there anymore? I haven't met her yet. Why haven't you met her yet? Why haven't you met her yet? So be careful with the word order here. Why haven't you met her yet? Now, there's an interesting point here in your student guide, which is that we always, in reality, almost always, use the contraction in these structures. Why aren't you? Why isn't it? Why don't I? Why doesn't he? Why hasn't he? Why haven't I? Why didn't I? Why won't they? Why wouldn't I? Why shouldn't I? Why can't I? I'm using the contraction. Okay? So as you repeat in this exercise, use the contraction with me. It hasn't been repaired yet. So then the, the ask me why. Kyle, why hasn't it been repaired yet? Why hasn't it been repaired yet? The books haven't been printed yet. Why haven't the books been printed yet? She didn't call me yesterday. Why didn't she call you yesterday? Why didn't she call you yesterday? They don't need our help. Why don't they need our help? Why don't they need our help? Hmm. He wouldn't he wouldn't go with us. 
Why wouldn't he go with us? I would rather have a new one than fix the original. So ask me why. Kyle, why would you rather have a new why would you rather have a new one than fix the original? Hmm. She wouldn't recognize me now. Why wouldn't she recognize you now? I can't find the street. Why can't you find the street? I don't know. I can't find the street. I'm lost. I used to get lost a lot when I first moved to Madrid. I used to carry a map with me for about a year and a half. <laughs> it's true. I carried a map everywhere I went because I used to get I used to get lost all the time. And good thing El Corte Inglés gives free maps. I used to I I went down there and I got a map and I kept it in my pocket for about a year and a half, really. And uh, it saved me a lot because I used to get lost all the time. Yeah. All right, so here we have the structure. Negative questions with the question word, why? Why? Okay, so very important structure. But let's move on now and take a look at our vocabulary of the day. Vocabulary of the day. All right, it is time for the vocabulary of the day. This is our five words of vocabulary. The first one, introducir en fases. This is to phase in. Now, the opposite, of course, would be to phase out. So, introducir en fases, to phase in. For example, the, the euro, the euro coin, we phased in the euro, and here in Spain, they phased out the peseta. Mm -hmm. So, in, a, in, a, in other words, what I mean is they... There was a period when they said, okay, there's going to be this new currency called the euro. It's going to look like this, and so on. Then they launched the currency, but the peseta was still in circulation and still accepted for a period of a few months. Then they eventually said, okay, you can't spend the euro, but you can just, the, sorry, the, the peseta, then you, but you can still take it to banks. And then they said you can't take it to banks, only the, the central bank or certain limited banks. So they, they, what they did was they phased out, they phased out the peseta. And at the same time, they phased in the euro. So they're introducing emphasis to phase in. Desempeñar un papel. Desempeñar un papel. We say to play a role. To play a role. So, to play a role, now, un, un papel, we say a role. Like in a theater piece, or in a, or in a film, to play a role. Or even in a relationship, with friends, you have to play, I have to play the role of, 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 of host, for example. Introducing people, or, or hosting people at an event. So, to play a role, desempeñar un papel. Next, we have dar un puñetazo, which is to punch, to punch. Something I try not to do. I never punch people. I don't punch. But to punch, P-U-N-C-H. Reunir las condiciones. Reunir las condiciones, we say to qualify. Do you qualify for this for this loan, for example, to qualify for a loan, to qualify for um, a program, to be eligible for something? Do you meet the requirements? And then we have the verb to qualify, to qualify, to qualify for something. Reconsiderar. Reconsiderar. To reconsider. To reconsider. I hope if you've thought about quitting this course, about not not studying hard, I hope you will reconsider that thought. I hope you'll reconsider it. Okay. To reconsider. Re with an R. Re. Not, not, not re, but reconsider. All right. Now the last thing. We've got about three minutes, so we'll move on to our last point, which is... A nice little practice with the present perfect 
here with some irregular verbs. So I'm going to ask you some questions, and I want you to answer me. And this, these questions will force you into the present perfect. So, when did you last sleep under a bridge? When did you last sleep under a bridge? I've never slept under a bridge. Okay? So, remember, I need you to answer these questions out loud, right? Everyone, Isabel. Isabel, you know, here in Madrid, yes, out loud, en voz alta. When was the last time you spent the afternoon in Sacramento, California? Sacramento, California. Well, Kyle, I've never spent the afternoon in Sacramento, California. Now, I'm asking about a moment in the past, in simple past, but the answer, I have never present perfect, because the period of time is your life, continuing up to the present inclusive. So, notice I said, when did you last sleep under a bridge? I could also say, when was the last time you slept under a bridge? And it's the same question. When was the last time you stole money from me? Kyle, I have never I have never stolen money from you. I've never stolen money from you. When was the last time you took someone to a Slovakian restaurant? I've never taken anyone to a Slovakian restaurant. Never. When did you last understand German perfectly? I've never understood German perfectly. Never. When did you last wear something made in Alaska? When did you last wear something made in Alaska? I've never worn anything made in Alaska. Wear, wore, worn. I've never worn anything. So we can't have the double negative. So we say, I've never worn anything made in Alaska. Hmm. When did you last wake up in a crystal palace? I've never woken up in a crystal palace. All right, friends, we are out of time. I'm going to finish there, but I hope you will join me again tomorrow. Keep practicing. There's a nice discussion here of the present perfect. We'll practice this tomorrow. It's a very important tense. So we'll be back tomorrow at the same time for a whole lot more. I do hope you'll join me. See you then. Bye-bye.